One thing I ask and I would seek to hear the mix well. My in ear sound so stinking terrible. All right, singers, it's time to have an honest conversation. Your monitor mix probably needs some help. You took all these singing lessons and took a long time to learn how to sing well, but then we just plop this 16 channel mixer in front of you and say, good luck, have fun. A great monitor mix can help you sing with confidence and sound your best. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step what you need and how to set it up. So whether you're a singer, a worship leader, or a sound tech helping singers, this video's for you. So what makes a great vocal performance? Pitch? pulse, and passion. So our monitor mix needs to support that so that we have a pitch element, we have a timing element, and the mix feels right where the energy is right so that we can respond emotionally to the music with our singing. Pitch elements help us know with confidence where the center of the pitch is and what key we're in and the chord that's going on if we're singing harmonies. A good starting place for this are pianos and keyboards or acoustic guitars if that's the primary instrument. Timing elements help us lock into the pulse of the music. And when we're locked in on the timing, beautiful things happen. This is the drums and usually the primary rhythm instrument. The click track can help you stay in time when there's no other rhythmic element going on. But you don't have to have it super loud. It can bleed through your ears and get into your microphone. The lead element tells us where we are and where we're going. If you're not the worship leader, this should be the worship leader. Finally, you need to be able to hear yourself at the right level. And this is especially critical for singers. We'll go over more of this in a minute and I'll bring my friend Jay in to show you. All right, singers, step one starts before you even get to sound check. You have to warm up before you get started. If you're embarrassed and you don't wanna do vocal trills in front of the whole band, warm up in the car. I don't care, but please come to sound check warmed up. It makes a big difference. If you're not warmed up, the sound tech's gonna turn you up too much. Then as you do get warmed up, you're gonna be much louder and it throws everything off. So please, seriously, warm up before you come. Now, before you even plug in, it really matters the equipment that you're using. If you're just using consumer earbuds to hear yourself, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Consumer earbuds are really just made for listening to pre-recorded music. You're not gonna sing your best if you can't hear yourself well. So getting a great set of in-ear monitors can be super helpful. The ones I use are the Mi Audio M6 Pros. They go for about 50 bucks on Amazon. They come with a bunch of different tips, which we'll talk about later, but they sound good and they're inexpensive. I mean, how much money have you actually spent on equipment for coming to sing at church? My guess is around none. Guitar players buy pedals and strings. Drummers have to buy cymbals, which are crazy expensive. So you can spend spend 50 bucks on some mini I've also heard great things about some $25 ones on Amazon. I'll put links down in the description below. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you really should buy your own. Okay, now that you've plugged in the right in your monitors, here's how you get started. Make sure that you start with the master up high enough to begin. I don't know how many times I've walked up to a mixer and the inputs are all turned all the way up and the singer's confused about why they can't hear anything and it's a big mess. If you start with the master too high, it's easy to turn that down and turn other things up. It's much harder to turn everything down and then turn up the master. Some mixers have a trim function that turns everything down at the same time when you get in a pinch. So you can ask your sound tech to show you how to use that. The next thing to check is to make sure the ambient mic is turned down. A lot of these mixers have a microphone built into it so that you can hear the sounds around you. While this is great for communication during a rehearsal, it doesn't really sound good during the performance. So go ahead and turn that down. The third thing to do is to make sure that the bass and treble start out flat. You can adjust these later, but a mix that has too much low end can affect your perception of the pitch. The last thing that I check before starting is to make sure that the limiter isn't turned up too high. This limiter is great for making sure that your hearing is protected in case somebody unplugs something and it makes a loud pop through the system. But if it's turned up too much, you can squash your mix and ruin things. So please be careful. All right, now that we've got all that out of the way, let me put on my in-ears and I'll show you how to set up a basic mix. I'm gonna mix this as if I'm the worship leader, so follow along on what I do. The first thing is the primary instrument, which is the piano, and then I'm gonna mix in my own vocal. So take a listen. Find here that which you are drawn Now I'm going to add in the drums and the bass. A broken and a contrite heart With hearts wide open We sing our song to you With expectation We ask in faith 
drum. All right, so the piano is giving me a pitch element and a timing element. The drums are solidifying that timing element, and the bass adds a little bit of support. Now, don't rush this part. Make sure these elements feel right and feel like they're in the right spot, because they're the foundation of everything else you're going to build your mix on. A little bit of bass can really help your monitor mix, but if you turn it up too much and there's too much low end, it can affect your perception of the pitch center, and that can totally jack you up. Please don't get jacked up on behalf of the bass. If on your monitor mix, you've just got a stereo mix of all the drums, awesome. The less decisions you have to make, the better. If you have all the individual channels, just focus on kick, snare, and overheads. You can add in toms too, but they can add more noise. And if your drummer isn't isolated with a cage or a shield, there's gonna be plenty of spill coming into the vocal mics already. Now that we've got these basic elements, we can start to turn up the other inputs that give us that feeling. Remember, we're going for pitch, pulse, and passion, so it's really important for you to have all the feeling in that monitor mix. This song has two electric guitars, so I'm going to pan them to one side and then the other. Everything we've turned up so far has been panned to the center, or it's equal in both ears. Panning things can really help you isolate what this guitar is doing versus this guitar, and it preserves all that space in the middle for your critical elements. I'll turn them up a little bit too loud so that I can identify them and then back them off so that I know what I'm listening to. The pad is already coming in in stereo, so I'm just gonna leave that to the middle. You're our deepest heart's desire. Come and meet us where we are. Find here that which you are drawn to. A broken and a contrite heart. With hearts wide open, we sing our song to you. With expectation, we ask in vain. Draw near to us, O oh God. As we draw near, as we come close to your heart. Draw near, draw near. Oh God. Now you might think that the electric guitars aren't all that critical, but they really help add that energy and dynamic so that you can feel it when you're singing. And remember, you started with a great foundation. So if you start to be able to not hear something, see what you can turn down to make room for it rather than just turning that thing up. Then you don't ratchet up and 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 then you're sunk. Now as a singer, you have to be careful about instruments that could throw off your pitch center. Organs going through Leslie cabinets and non-fretted instruments like violins and cellos. They're amazing instruments, but they don't always have the rock solid pitch to help you sing right in the center of the note. So for your pitch reference, you have to be protective and keep those lower in the mix or not on at all. Now another challenge you can run into is that the primary instrument can change from song to song. So if you're feeding your mix from an iPhone or an iPad that's there during sound check, but gone during the service, you really need to just split the difference between those two primary instruments. It can be helpful to pan each one of them to opposite sides, a little bit left and a little bit right, but I wouldn't go hard left and right with these primary instruments. Another challenge is when the lead singer changes. A lot of churches are sharing song leading responsibilities, so it's really important to make sure that whoever's the lead vocalist, you're following them. Again, this might take an in-flight adjustment or just splitting the difference. Now, one thing that I hear from a lot of singers is dealing with the inner hum. If you stick your fingers in your ear and talk, that sound you're hearing is coming through your bones. And that's what it feels like when you've got in-ear monitors in. It can be really disconcerting. But there are some things you can do to avoid this other than taking one in-ear monitor out. Seriously, keep both in-ear monitors in. You have to keep them both in. Here's why. Your brain measures how loud something is by the average of both your ears. So if it's really loud in one side and not really loud in the other, your brain isn't gonna sound that alarm and say, whoa, this is too loud, turn it down, so that you can damage your hearing on one side without even realizing it. But I see Celine Dion in the studio and she's only got one headphone on. Why can't I do that? Well, those professional singers that you see in the studio, they have somebody feeding their monitor mix for them and they're making sure that it's not too loud. When you're Celine Dion and you have your own show in Vegas, then you can do it. Okay, so you're gonna follow my advice and keep both in-ears in, but you're still dealing with the inner hum. Well, there's a couple things that you can do. It's really important to get in-ear monitors that fit right. Again, that's why I suggest buying your own and finding the tips that fit right for you. If they're too big, they're gonna hurt your ears, and if they're in too deep, you're gonna get the inner hum. So one solution is to get custom molds. Now, if you're singing in church on a regular basis, 
basis, this is not all that expensive. Check with the manufacturer of your in-ear monitors to see who they recommend to get custom molds through. The other reaction I've seen to people dealing with the inner hum is to turn their voice up so loud that they're screaming in their in-ear monitors. I don't know how they do it. They're probably damaging their hearing and it's not a great long-term solution. So don't go down that road. One worshiper leader I know pans his voice to one side just a little bit. That little bit of difference helps tell your brain what's coming through the in-ears and what's rattling through your bones. If panning it just a little bit doesn't work, I know another worship leader that pans it all the way to one side. It might be a little weird at first, but it beats fighting yourself on where the pitch is. Okay, James, I got custom molds, but I still feel isolated when I put them in. So that brings us to our next point, adding reverb or room mics. A little bit of reverb on your own voice can give it that space that you're used to because you're never listening to somebody's voice from an inch away to the microphone and a centimeter away from your eardrum in the ear of your monitor. It just doesn't happen. Now, one more thing about reverb is that if you add too much and it's too long, that can affect your pitch perception as well because you're hearing more of what you were singing rather than what you're singing right now. The other thing that you can do is feed some room mics back into the in-ear monitor system. A couple of 58s or 57s on the front of the stage can work for this, but shotgun mics are better. And again, height is your friend. Now, as a singer, this takes a team effort because you're probably not setting up your own shotgun mics on the front of the stage. These mics don't just help with ambience, they help you feel the response of the congregation as well, so that you don't feel isolated from them when you see them responding. Now, you can try the ambient mic on your mixer, but it might just clutter up your mix, so be careful with that. The only thing I can hear is my voice. The only thing I can hear is my voice. The only thing I can hear is my voice. Am I even in tune? Now the trickiest part of getting a great monitor mix as a singer is getting your own level right. You will automatically mix yourself with how loud you sing if your mixer is set up the wrong way. If you're set too loud, you're not gonna project from your diaphragm and your pitch is gonna start to go under. But if you're set too quiet, you're gonna end up straining and hurting your voice to try to be able to hear yourself over the rest of the mix. This is why I recommend that you warm up before you come to sound check. You need to be singing properly with the right breath support to set your level right. It really sets yourself up for success. So there's two basic variables in getting the level right. The first is the overall level of the mix. If the mix isn't loud enough, you're not gonna feel that emotion and that passion. If the mix is too loud, you're gonna try to strain and push yourself over that mix and it's gonna hurt your hearing. Now I've gotta warn you again, you can damage your hearing by your mix being too loud and nobody knows it but you. You turn it up to get that nice, big, loud feeling, but over time, your ears normalize. So they're like, oh, I want that feeling back. You crank it up just a little bit more. Well, then it starts to normalize again and you crank it up some more. And at that point, you're at levels that are damaging your hearing and you could end up with tinnitus or permanent threshold shift, which is a really big problem. So I'm not a skilled enough singer to show you how this stuff works. So I'm bringing in my friend Jay so that he can demonstrate what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like when your monitor mix is out of whack and you're not singing the right way. All right, so I got my friend Jay Thomas here. He's gonna be demonstrating for you what it sounds like and what it looks like when you're not singing the right way based on how you're set your own level in your monitor mix. So when you're set too low and you're pushing too hard or when you're set too high and you're not projecting enough. I'm gonna let you hear his mix, him singing with a mix that he made so that you can hear what he's going to do in a normal setting and then we'll adjust it one way or the other so that you can see and hear what it's like. Find here that which you are drawn to A broken and a contrite heart With hearts wide open We sing our song to you With expectation We ask in faith Draw near to us Oh God, as we draw near, as we come close to your heart. So that's what properly projecting and supporting your voice sounds like. Now let's turn up the vocal so that you can hear what it's like when he's not projecting enough. As we draw near, as we come close to your heart, close to your heart. All right, it's a pretty noticeable difference when he's not projecting enough. Now let's have him turn it down too hard to see what it's like when he's pushing and overcompensating for that mix being too low. Oh God. As we draw near, as we come close to your heart. Draw 
to your heart, close to your heart. It's real though. <laughs> you know that is not the first time you've heard that. <laughs> it's very real. It's real. Now, if you get in a pinch with your monitor mix, don't be afraid to ask for help. It took a long time for you to learn how to sing well. It's not going to be a surprise to anybody if you need some help with your monitor mixer. Your sound tech mixes all the time, so they're going to have an easier time getting your mixer adjusted and identify those problem things that are tripping you up. Have them teach you what to do so that you can know what to do for next time. Singers, it's time to have an honest conversation. Sometimes your singing being off has nothing to do with your monitor mix. We're emotional creatures and stuff in life happens. So don't take it out on the sound tech or the monitor mix if you're not singing your best and feeling right. I might have a little bit of wounding on this one, but you should be self-aware enough to know when you're not feeling right because of what's going on in your heart rather than what's going on in your ears. And sound techs, try to be supportive and be as helpful as you can with singers. The things that are second nature to you might not be so easy for them. Now, no singer is an island, and hopefully you've got a lot of background singers with you. I grew up singing in choir, and I know that feeling when everybody blends well together. It's electric. I love it. But how do you help your monitor mix get you there? A good rule of thumb is to have the other singers about 4 or 5 dB down from your vocal mic. This helps you hear them well enough, but you still clearly hear you out in front of your mix. Now it's time for a little more honesty. You might have a singer on your worship team that can't quite nail the center of the pitch all the time and it's dragging you down. In that case, you need to turn them down so that when the band is in, you don't really hear them, but if they ask you a question through their mic, then you'll hear them. It can be really crushing for a singer if they figure out that nobody's turned their mic on. Now if you're that singer that's still learning and still putting yourself out there, bravo! Thank you for serving. You're gonna have to have honest conversations with your worship leader about where you're at and where you're improving and keep on taking lessons so that you can nail that pitch and get on those parts just right. But thank you for serving even before you're there. In a photoshopped, auto-tuned world, it can be a real challenge to put yourself out there before everything's perfect. Not everything's Instagram worthy, so you've gotta be okay and be merciful on yourself when you're not there yet. Now, if you've ever walked up to a mic and talked into it and it sounds really muffled, that's called the proximity effect. And I made a video about that if you wanna watch it. I'll put a link down in the description. If your mixer has individual channel EQ, you can turn down the low frequencies on the vocal channels and this will help clean it up some. Now, this is a little nerdy, so share this with the sound tech if you get confused. Some consoles will let you send the channel post high pass filter, which basically rolls off some of that low end and the rumble coming back into the in-ear monitor system. It just helps clean everything up. Okay, nerd time's done. Now here's the last thing I'll say about your monitor mix and mic technique. Your microphone is meant to capture dynamics, not create them. Now if you're out here like this, ah, that's not gonna pick up your voice. But when you really need to push for those high notes, it can tend to hurt a little bit. So if you go from right here where you should normally be to just about here, that should be plenty for turning it down enough while still capturing your voice. Remember a second ago I talked about proximity effect? Well, when you back off the microphone, that proximity effect goes away. When you sing higher and louder, your tone naturally gets thinner. And when you back off the microphone, that proximity effect goes away, so the tone of the microphone gets thinner, and that can result in harsh toned vocals. And that's not really good for anybody. So if this video was helpful for you, share it with the rest of your worship team. For more information on getting a great sound from your worship team and your sound techs, download my free guide, How to Lead Your Church Sound Team. The link's down in the description below. Don't forget to click subscribe and ding the little bell to turn on notifications. Hit like, share this with a friend, and we'll see you next time. My monitor mix is so bad, but I don't know what to do, so I'll just keep on faking it. The biggest difference between me and Jay that everybody notices first is that during worship, I can drink coffee and he can't. <laughs> right.